those bowed legs, that's Florence. She had bowed legs. And she's holding her baby powder and Gladys is sitting in the background. And I've been to that house that has the, that's in the background. It has the lattice work under the porch, but I couldn't tell you where it is in McMinnville. Gladys sitting under, sitting under a tree that doesn't look like, it looks more like a palm tree or something an overgrown palm of some description. She may have made a trip with us to Florida. I don't remember it, but she may have. But that definitely is Gladys. Hobart Jr. with his legs slung over a bicycle, and this is number 93. And three kids at the beach don't know who they are for sure. I swear it looks a little like Steve up that. It's probably not right. Uncle Tommy again. This is uh, 97. Gladys in that same lake Maybe that's Thomas Earl. I'm not quite sure who that is. That looks like Thomas Earl. And Florence. And I don't know who's not showing back there. Maybe it's me. But I don't think so. The hair looks too dark. And looks like a Model A in the background. I don't recognize the house in the background. Florence, waving goodbye to somebody. Florence, 101. She was the cutest one of all of us. And this is myself with all the crepe paper costume on, and Molly Crumbless, who was a good friend of mine that lived up the hill when we lived at Richard City near Jasper in whatever county that is. And that's me in that costume again. They had kindergarten in that school, and I, I went to kindergarten, or maybe it was first grade, and we put on a show that spring it might have been first grade because I did not learn to read in first grade, which I've often told my students. Because they used whole word, you just memorize the vocabulary. And I don't learn that way. So when my mother found that I could not read, she taught me letter, letters and their sounds and to use them for clues. And all at once it made sense to me. And the first book that I could read alone was Little Black Sambo. And I would go from door to door in Richard City and knock on the door and say, you want to hear me read? And they'd say, sure. <laughs> and I'd sit out on their front steps and I'd read Little Black Sambo. Then I'd go to the next door and I'd knock on the door and say, you want to hear me read? <laughs> and I went to every neighbor in the neighborhood <laughs> and read Little Black Sambo. <laughs> which wasn't considered racist or anything like that. But I could figure out those crazy words in there. And I was so proud of myself. So years and years and years later, I guess it was about 20 years ago now, but uh, at any rate, somebody who had heard that story gave me a copy of Little Black Sambo, and I've still got that book. <laughs> the first one I could read by myself. <laughs> And this is Granddaddy Massey and Mark Darren Lewis and the Cocker Spaniel Puppy 
and Gladys. Gladys had originally said she would come and be with me when you were born, when Mark was born, but declined to come when the actual happening came. But this was once when you visited, when they visited Daddy and Gladys visited us in Alabama, Tuscaloosa, one block from Denny Stadium. Uh, this is 109, and I'm standing in, I think, my grandparents' yard in Florida. Mother's mother and father had a boarding house in Florida. Eustace or Mount Dora, one of the two. My aunt, mother's oldest sister, lived in the other town, either Mount Dora or Eustace. And we, uh, when Hobart Jr. was little, he fell out of a swing and and hurt, uh, got fluid on the outside of his lung, and they operated, took a piece of a rib from the back, which left a hole about the size of a silver dollar, that you could see it looked like a big dimple, but uh, you could see where that had been to draw fluid off. They had no antibiotics in those days, and uh, this was a quite serious operation for a child that young, so they sent mother and Hobart Jr., and of course I had to go with them, they just had the two children, to Florida to avoid the cold winters up here and for recuperation of health. So uh, we stayed down there that winter, and then we went back to see them. Usually once a year we would make the trip to Florida to see them. I'm a lot older than that in this picture, and uh, in number 109, but I think that's made in Florida. Hobart Jr. and Mary Florence standing at the beach Hobart's pant legs are rolled up, and you can see the waves in the background. And these are old timey. This is uh, 111. And this is old timey picture. I think must be Anna Mae on the left. Another aunt with a Peter Pan collar, probably Grandma Massey, and probably my mother with a scoop neck, black dress with a scoop neck, and I don't know who that man is or why he's in the picture. <laughs> Okay, this is Grandma Massey. This is four generations, three generations. Grandma Massey, my daddy, Hobart, on the left, holding his firstborn, which was Hobart Jr., and my mother with this black dress with a scoop neck top is standing behind Granny and a Model T Ford in the background. And I'm pretty pretty sure these were this was made at the home place uh, the nearest town or the nearest crossroads was called St. Elmo it's now been incorporated into the city of Chattanooga but they lived out on the farm and lived they had river bottom land and they lived about two miles from the little church. Anyway, I guess that's about all I remember about that. And this looks like it must be Grandma Massey. And maybe all of her children. No. My daddy and firstborn are on the left. Uncle Herschel and his firstborn are on the right is on the right, squatting down. 
I don't know the other children. But up at the top is my mother with a black scoop neck. The woman, the bl woman that had on the black dress with the Peter Pan collar, Grandma Massey, and that man again, which may have been Uncle Walter, and the woman with the glasses standing behind Uncle Herschel, I think is Aunt Anna Mae. June will know, and I think June will know who all of these children are, June Allison. And this is uh, the three generation. They're not quite ready for the picture. My daddy, his firstborn, Grandma Massey, my mother standing in the background, and the Model T Ford, and somebody's kid standing over here out of the picture. I don't know who. 